So this year for our Christmas dinner, we are going to have ribeye steaks. And I'd like to share with you a few tips on how I like to cook my steaks. Now for me personally, I think the hardest part about cooking a really good ribeye steak is selecting a good steak to begin with. The cooking part actually comes together very easy. So for us home cooks, a lot of those really high-end steaks make it to the fancy steakhouse restaurants before they make it down to the consumer level. But I'll give you a few tips at the end of the video for those of you who are unsure about what might be a really good steak. So for today's video, I am going to use ingredients I picked up at Aldi grocery store. Of course, you can find these simple ingredients at most grocery stores. So I thought I would give their steaks a try and I'll cover that a little bit more at the end of the video. I also picked up some clarified butter, which is easy to make and store in your refrigerator. I did a video on that many years ago and I'll make sure to leave you a link for it because that's hard to find at a lot of grocery stores. So um, I will leave you a link for that. And then I like to use these little grinders for my salt and pepper. From my garden, I picked up a few sprigs of rosemary, and then you'll also need just a couple of cloves of garlic. I'm only going to cook one steak for this demonstration. So first thing we wanna do is get out maybe a paper plate and a couple of paper towels. My steak is one inch thick because I'm going to show you how to cook this. And if your steak is thinner than one inch, then you will need to adjust your cooking times accordingly. If it's thicker, a little longer, obviously. If it's thinner, a little shorter. So we want to season our steak real well. I really like using the grinder because I get a little bit of fine salt along with coarse salt and that makes the steak really good I think and then we'll also of course want to use some cracked pepper on here and then I want to turn it over and also make sure to season the other side make sure to get up any extra little salt and pepper there make sure you generously salt your steak and again cracked pepper on this side try not to use ground pepper if you can and then we'll just cover it up with a paper towel, which will help wick away some of the moisture. And we want our steak to be nice and dry when we go to cook it. And now I'll test the surface temperature of the steak. It's around 57 degrees Fahrenheit, and I am looking for around 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So I just need a few more minutes. So I covered it back up with the paper towel. As you can see, a lot of the moisture is being wicked from the steak. I have a paper plate underneath along with another paper towel underneath there as well. And so we'll test the surface temperature again. I'm right at 60 degrees Fahrenheit, which is where I wanna be. So I want to cook the steak over a gas flame. Um, this is a little butane portable stove and it works great. Uh, they sell these on Amazon. It's always just good to have something like this as a backup if power's out or whatever. My stove in my kitchen is electric, but it doesn't really get my pan hot enough like this gas stove does. So this is what I'll be using to cook the steak. And I'm also going to use a cast iron skillet. So I turned up my flame on almost high, about one notch shy of being on full high. And again, I'll test the surface temperature and I am well over 500 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's where we wanna be. And so now I can put a little bit of the clarified butter in my pan. Do not under any circumstances use regular butter for this. It will turn into just an awful mess of smoke. That butter will burn so fast. So clarify your butter first. And like I said, it's real easy to do. You can do that ahead of time. Okay, so now in goes the steak and I put a little time stamp down here at the bottom so you can see just how long I'm cooking this one inch thick steak on each side. And we'll give it just a little bit more butter because I want to infuse that butter with some of the garlic cloves and the sprigs of rosemary. And we'll go ahead and put a little bit of butter right there on the uncooked side. And now it's time to flip it. And again, a little bit more of this butter. We'll just baste it like this. A 
tested my cast iron skillet one more time just for the temperature and I'm still well over 500 degrees Fahrenheit and it doesn't take long to cook it to medium rare you'll want to add another one or two minutes for medium and then about four or five more minutes for medium well and onto our plate it goes and I'll drizzle over the remaining butter from the pan and now comes the hard part got to wait and let it rest and this is very important so once it's rested you can dig in So now for those of you who would like a few tips on selecting a steak to begin with, um, what you'll want to look for is a steak like this. You can see here these steaks have a nice what's called ribeye cap and that's the best part of the ribeye. And these usually come from what's called a center cut of the whole ribeye. This is an example of what they call USDA prime steaks. It has a little bit more marbling in it and that's the best steak that is graded by the USDA in the United States. So if you're unsure about how steaks are graded in the US, the USDA generally will put steaks into categories that you find at your grocery store and the one that is the best and is usually found at the fancy steakhouses that is called USDA Prime they are wonderful they are the best steaks I just am so sad that my local grocery store no longer sells them um, and then you have of course choice steaks sometimes I've looked up and found a really good choice steak and it was really comparable to a prime steak but that's hit or miss so I just want to give you an idea of what you're looking for now over here is an example of a steak which I would not buy you see there's hardly any marbling in the inside of that steak and marbling just means it's little flecks of fat that run through the ribeye steak it has a real nice what they call ribeye cap on it that's that little strip of meat that goes around the outside there but if the main part of the ribeye steak shows no marbling or very very little as does this steak then I pass on it I'd rather not eat a steak so if you're unsure if your grocery store sells USDA Prime um, it will be marked when you go through your store you'll look for this little sticker and it will say USDA Prime do not confuse that with Prime Rib okay that is not the same USDA Prime is not Prime Rib and for the ribeyes that I've been finding at Aldi, it has a nice defined cap on it, nice marbling, and then it's grated as a choice steak. So, um, but like I said, I've been very pleased with these, and I would highly recommend you giving them a try, though the ones that are like this with the nice defined cap on them can be a little bit hard to find because people like me are always picking over them and getting them first. <laughs> They're one inch thick cut, and they keep in the refrigerator for a while because of the way they are vacuum packed and sealed. So there you go. That's how I like to pick out my steaks and cook them. If you have any questions, please leave them down below the video. Let me know how you enjoyed the video. And I hope you all have a great Christmas this year. Thank you so much for watching and y'all have a beautiful day.